Hey guys, welcome back to Flat Creek Outdoors. I'm Phil. Today we're going to split a bunch of wood. If you've tuned in here lately, I've been accumulating some wood here and I recently moved the wood yard up to the front of my property. So I've got a pile of logs over there I can work on. That was two truckloads that was delivered. I've got a bunch of wood that's already bucked up. Some of this I've picked up from other sites that were uh, clearing some land and they had some hardwoods available and I went and picked up a few trailer loads. I've got a few logs worth of rounds here bucked up that I shared with you on a previous video. And I've got a little bit of wood started to stack up over here. I don't have any more pallets right now, so I'm not going to do any more stacking, but I wanted to get a bunch of wood split and just piled up over here so it can start to season for next year. But eventually I'll have this whole tree line here stacked up with wood. A few of you did comment on an earlier video about this wood yard, this new wood yard location being up here and being pretty shady. I'm not too concerned about it because it does get so hot here in Virginia and we have a really long summer. I'm not too concerned about it for that reason, but I'm also not too concerned because I do intend on clearing out a few of these trees. So all next summer, this wood will probably be in the sun. But I'm just waiting until the fall for all the leaves to drop off of these trees. So I've got one big white oak there. I've got another one over here. There are several other large trees around here. One of them is a hickory and a couple other oaks that I could take down. But I think I'm just going to take down the first two or three that are right here. And most of the day sun then will come down right on this location. And the late afternoon sun will be uh, shaded from those trees over in that direction. But that's all part of the plan here. I know trying to season wood in the shade and under trees is not ideal, but I think we're gonna be okay.
Well, it's hot out here today, y'all. This shirt is drenched. It's gotta be 90 degrees in the shade. And I was wondering, partially because someone asked on a previous video, how hot does this thing get in the heat? And recently, Chris from Wolfridge released a video showing that they have a oil cooler add-on available for this line of splitters. Now, it used to be you could only get an oil cooler on the next model up, I believe. And now you can get them on this line, on the compact commercial line. And and I don't actually know what the high temperature is recommended, but we got well over 140 degrees here, according to the thermometer on the side of the tank. Uh, probably upwards of 150 because there's uh, you know, those lines that are on there are every 20 degrees. So uh, I think that's pretty hot. I do recall from the video, Chris mentioned that the oil fan or the oil cooling fan kicks on around 120. So it seems to me that probably want it to run a lot cooler than 140, 150. But uh, that was only after about 45 minutes of splitting. We got a good amount done, happy about that. Uh, I have more uh, bucked up that I could split, but I'm gonna let that thing cool down a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna do any more today anyway. I'll probably just go ahead, I've got a few logs here I can cut up. I can pull a couple more logs off of the pile over there and just add to this pile of rounds over here so I can spend, you know, another day splitting some more. But it does concern me a little bit. And if you guys know what the optimum temperature is for a hydraulic system like this and what temperature I should look out for as far as, you know, not exceeding whatever, 150, 140, you guys let me know. If it's in the manual, in the Wolfridge manual for this thing, I don't recall what it what it is, but I will double check it when I get home and I'll drop it in uh, this video's, uh, you know, in a little subtitle area right here if it says. But if it doesn't say, you guys can let me know. This was the first time I pulled the splitter out of the yard with the pallet forks on like that. It just occurred to me today that the forks sit a few inches lower than where the uh, hitch goes in. So the forks don't obstruct at all with the machine when you're moving around as long as you don't tilt them up. And they're short enough or the tongue on the splitter is long enough that the forks don't hit anywhere on the splitter at all. They don't hit the wheels, they don't hit the axle, don't hit the tank. Again, as long as I don't tilt them up, they stay well out of the way. So that all worked well. That's actually gonna save me a bunch of time in the future because I dread taking these forks off. That's one of the disadvantages of this Artillion system compared to other three-point attachments that are out there is that moving from one uh, item to the next uh, repeatedly or frequently, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And if I was to get, do this all over again, uh, I probably would um, prefer separate forks that you can just um, you know, come up with a quick attach, grab the forks, and then drop them off when you don't want them. Because sliding them off of that pallet fort rack is kind of a pain. And sliding the um, grapple attachments back on the rack is actually easier. But still, if there's ever any jobs where you want to switch back and forth between the two things, it's a bit of a chore to switch back and forth. Considerably more of a chore than it would be if you were to just use the quick attach. Well, thanks for spending a little bit of time, guys. If you've got any questions or comments about what we did here, let me know what you think about the hydraulic temperature. Let me know what you think about moving the tra moving the splitter with the tractor like that. Let me know how you think I did splitting this wood, whatever, good or bad. I like to hear it. I like to read it. Until next time, hope you have a good one. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.